What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Holland Nerds podcast. I'm Nate. I'm Brandon. And this time, just like recently, me and Stu did a video on how to get into comics. This time, it's me and Brandon. We're back with a part two, kind of some pointers, tips, and tricks to how to get into comics. Um, starting it off, I guess, me and Stu last time went over how we got into comics. Brandon, how did you get into comics? Uh, initially, it started with uh, Deadpool. I was just in the bookstore and I saw it and I was like, oh, this looks cool. So I got it. It was like Deadpool 3, Volume 3 by Daniel Way. And I read that book probably about 30 times. And then I got Civil War and just a couple other little comics. And I would just reread all those over and over again. And then to like high school and college, I kind of took like a break. And I would read online on my phone a little bit, but I didn't have room for comics. And then what really jump started like all this was the Batman 2022. It like it like made me like dive back into it again because i picked up the batman action figure which Hell is like yeah. the first action figure i'd gotten since i remember I like, you telling me about that yeah 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 and so i got that and then i was like oh, i want to read more batman comics so i picked up scott snyder's new 52 batman and i was like dude this is this is sick and so from there it just the rest spiraled, is out, of yeah, spiraled out of control yeah well i mean that's a perfect way to kind of se segue into what i think is a great recommendation for new readers and what i kind of touched on last time is that like he just said, his first comic book ever was a volume three, right? Yeah. So like at the end of the day, obviously you want to start with number one. You want to start at the beginning, all this kind of stuff. But ultimately, when you're getting into comics, just pick up what you think looks dope. You, you, you're at a bookstore, you're at the library, you're at the comic book store, whatever it is. You see a book that catches your eye, regardless of it's number one or number 150. Doesn't matter if it catches your eye, just jump in. And then that's how you'll learn from there. See, now I'm very stickler for like, you know, reading order and reading continuity yeah. and make sure to read everything before until now. But at the time it was Deadpool and Deadpool is one of those characters. You really can just pick up anything because like, he's always doing some random thing in the comic. It's not, there's not a whole lot of like, you have to read this prior, you know? Totally. And if it is that they, they usually touch back on it. That, yeah. That's, that's, I agree with you on that. Um, Another recommendation for me that um I did touch on last time, but I want to just really double down on, is we find we all have our favorite characters and stuff like that but in my opinion um following specifically only characters a character can get tarnished very easily by bad writing or bad art where so it, i think it's better in the opposite to follow creators rather than obviously still follow your characters and stuff but creators i mean if if, if me personally i'm like i'm a big mark wade guy so practically yeah. every book by Mark Wade, I've I've liked because I like Mark Wade, regardless of if it's Flash, regardless of if it's Kingdom Come, Doctor Strange, it doesn't matter. Like so, I always say to follow creators. Yeah, find the writer that you enjoy their writing and the artist you enjoy their art, and kind of stick to those areas because you know you're always going to enjoy it. And sometimes they might write like something you won't like. Like personally, I love Tom King, and everyone hates heroes in crisis. Like he, he's usually most people like everything he's written, but everyone hates heroes in crisis. I personally love heroes in crisis, but that's because I'm a big Tom King fan. Same with Tom Taylor. I haven't disliked anything Tom Taylor's written. Um, yeah, including totally. injustice. I know, <laughs> I, I, we don't have to touch on that. I hated justice. Heroes in crisis. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm 50, 50 on it. There's a lot of things about it that I do like. There's some things that I don't like, but um, just as that shows, don't necessarily take what other people say about books. Um, to heart like sometimes a lot everyone in the world is going to absolutely love this book and then you read it and you didn't like it and that's totally fine everyone's got their own opinions or sometimes yeah. it's the opposite you read something that you absolutely love that everyone else hates so even with our recommendations that we're telling you about tips and tricks or specific books that we're recommending take it with a grain of salt because you might we you might not have the same opinions and taste as us so that's a big problem in the comic, community, comic book community sometimes is people just like to go off of word of mouth and not actually read the books. And they'll be like, you know, th this book sucks. This character sucks. And it's like, what have you read? I haven't read anything. I just heard this on TikTok. Yeah. And I was like, well, and it's fine if you read it and you don't like it or you read the character and you don't like the character. But like, if you know, you have to form your own opinions. You can't Facts. go off of what everyone else says, you know, Facts. like if you like All-Star Batman and Robin. You're wrong. You might, yeah. But still. No. <laughs> no, but everyone's no, got their own really taste like, and everything yeah, like that. So, preference. yeah. And a perfect example of that is um, a lot of people, you ask a lot of people, what's the best comic of all, all time? A lot of people are going to tell you um, The Darkest Night or The Dark Knight Returns. I mean, Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. Um, I, didn't, I didn't even know Frank Miller. And exactly. So, like, Brand, Brandon in particular di strongly dislikes 
Frank Miller when some people will tell you Frank Miller is the greatest of all time. And that doesn't mean he's wrong or the other people are right. It's just personal preference. So definitely make sure. Same thing with movies. School to you, get it. Yeah, exactly. 100%. 100%. Um, Let's think here. Um, I just kind of off topic, but you speaking of heroes in crisis, a little bit of a turn um, off topic. But did you read Green Arrow issue uh, eight or nine? No, I want to catch up on Green Arrow. I I finally finished Dark Crisis, so I'm finally ready to catch up on Green Arrow. Um, I'm finishing Wonder Woman, uh, catching up on like the last ten issues of Flash, and then I'm reading Green Arrow. So I'm like almost you ha- there. Did you hear what happened or no? Yeah, with the sanctuary. And okay, stuff. yeah, I was like, so they yeah. are tying back into Heroes in Crisis, which so is amazing. I'm super. Curious. I think the, I'm super curious the best part about Heroes in Crisis was like Tom King did something that nobody had really done yet and explored like the you know, the psychological effects totally. of being a superhero were yeah. after all those panels where they were like in the confession booth, essentially, were super unique. Yeah. Great idea. That I and, 100% um, agree with. And I get most people are like, oh, well, this ruined Wally's character because he killed all those people. And I was like, I don't think people like read the book because essentially, you know, he's going through all this trauma. Uh, he went to the sanctuary to get help. He was like, I just want my family back. And the sanctuary essentially told him, you can't get your family back. It's not going to happen. So that trauma boiled over. He had a little freak out and people died. Not like he didn't kill the people. They were in his vicinity when he had his little freak out and it caused them to die. Pretty much. yeah. And I just think that showed his grief boiling over, you know, to the point where it exploded. And oh, there, they, they did retcon it in a uh, Jeremy Adams run, essentially where it was sabotage. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So essentially uh, Batman and Red, yeah. Wally West was jumping through different speedsters' bodies throughout time, and he ended up jumping back into his own body during Heroes in Crisis, and he was, like, freaking out because he knew it was about to happen, but he had to let it happen, essentially. So Batman and Mr. – or no, Flash and Mr. Terrific in, like, present time were sending these, like, speed pulses back to try to bring them back, and Savitar pulled up, and he was like, I was the one that's been doing this. And then huh. they sent a speed pulse through, and it, the speed pulse is what caused the – explosion that killed everyone here uh, and, and yeah wally had to let it happen interesting huh i'm gonna have to yeah, yeah. when i read jeremy adams around i'll definitely I'm, I'm looking forward to that but to bring it back kind of onto the comic book tips and tricks or whatever um something that i get asked a lot that we didn't really touch on in the last time we did this is like comic book storage and like uh where where, where do we store my comics i get a lot of comments um, on my TikTok, talking about like, oh, you you get all these pickups every month or every Wednesday. Where do you put all these? Like, how do you have room for all these? For starters, bag each, and board. Yeah, each single issue, you want to bag and board it. You don't have to, obviously, but it is very much my preference. Um, if you don't bag and board it, then you're just gonna have this floppy piece of paper that could very easily be folded in half, bent in other directions and everything like that. Nick, which if you don't really care about the, 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 the condition of your comics, don't bother with uh, bags and boards and stuff like that. But most people do because comics can go up in value uh, monetarily or just like personal value. So it's definitely nice to keep them in good condition in case of those uh, things happen. And so basically bags and boards, you can get them at, your comic book stores, the local comic book stores online. They are not cheap, though. I will say they, they have gone up in cheap. price. Yeah. 100, 100 boards, I think, is like 15 bucks, And like 200 bags is like 10, 15 bucks. See, here's so the spending, crazy thing. You're spending half your pull list just on bags and boards. Here's the crazy thing. If you can, try your best. I mean, I only know one person else out there in the world that has a similar um, experience as me. Try to find an LCS like mine that bags and boards all the new comics for you. Dude, because I, I have yeah, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of single issues. And I have purchased one singular pack of 100 boards and 100 bags. And I still have them to this day. Um, but that being said, um, let me kind of just try each... The only bags and boards that come, the only ones of mine that comes with bags and boards are foils and like back order, like back issues. Those are the only ones that come with bags and boards. Any new issues are just on the shelf. That makes sense. But, yeah. you know, so bags and boards, very important. Um, There's resealable ones, which are going to be a little bit more expensive. That's just will have a kind of sticky thing under here. Or you can get non-resealable ones. I highly, highly, highly recommend if you do get the non-resealable Get blue painter's tape. It doesn't necessarily have to be blue, blue or whatever, but painter's tape, scotch tape. Because the scotch right, tape is uh, horrible. Yeah, just regular or old ever. clear scotch tape is going to – it's just too sticky where this is the perfect amount. You can lay it easily You can, and 
just pops right out super easily. Um, Plus, uh, if it sticks to the comic, the painter tape is not going to damage it. Whereas these, it'll literally pull. Exactly. Like, yeah, I can I, I can confidently like stick that and just pull it off. But anyway, go ahead and just slide them right on in there, tape it off. And then me personally, sometimes I mean, you could throw it on the shelf. You could throw it on the wall. Like you, can, you see, I got a couple single issues right there on the wall. Um, but my recommendation and most people's recommendation is going to be short boxes or long boxes. Um, basically, just cardboard boxes specifically shaped and made for comics. You got any on on you? Boom! Look at that. He's got a graphic box. Talk about it a little bit. I'm gonna grab a drawer box. Short boxes, long boxes, great for single issues. Because, I mean, short boxes, you can probably store, like, I'd say, what, like, uh, 50, 75 comics in there. Long boxes, it's more like 100, 150. I'm going to um, go with even a short box, you can fit 100 plus. You think so? Just a, I think so. Yeah, I think you might be right. So long boxes are two of those, so probably, like, 200. Yeah, see those? And then they so, also have, like, the filing. That's one of those filing cabinet ones that pull out. Yeah, these yeah. Is, this is my number one preference. If there's one tip I can really give a single-issue collector, is get your short boxes but don't get the graphic boxes, in my opinion. The graphic boxes look sick. I do have one. I have one graphic box specifically for all my grails, but all my other comic boxes, I have six of these drawer ones. Um, and they're just so much nicer because you could stack them up and you don't have to worry about taking three Lifting stacks it, yeah. of boxes off to get to the ones on the bottom. Just a nice drawer full of comics. I like it. I'm probably going to get some of those. I only have this graphic box because one, it's invincible. And yeah. two, it holds all of my signed comics. So it, it's where, where all my signed comics are. Yeah, so exactly. I have. I keep it to here. the side anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Here's my grail. Yeah. Grail box. Um, what we got in here? Yeah, I don't know. People get a little sneak peek of some grails. Yeah. Let's see here. Let me... Ooh. Not an not an X Men number one sign. This is a good one. Movie. See, this yeah. is one that doesn't necessarily have a lot of monetary value, but it's got a lot of personal value. I love Blade and I love John Tyler Christopher. Cool thing about comics is they do a lot of unique stuff like this. This is the first ever. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever had a greeting card where you open it and it makes a sound. Well, this one, it's a comic book where when you open it, it makes like the Godzilla uh, roar. So it's I wish dope. I got one of those. No, That's I, awesome. I couldn't hear it, but. Oh. Still can't hear it. <laughs> okay, well, it's doing it. It's I, I promise it's done. I've heard it before. Let's see here. Whoa, first appearance of Wally West as the Flash. Heck yeah. As All the right. Flash? Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Not first appearance of Wally West, I wish. <laughs> I was about to say, that's crazy. Woo, um, Flashpoint at San Diego Comic Con. Hmm. All right. Is that as exclusive? Yeah. Either way, Please. comic, comic boxes, book boxes. boxes. Uh, as for like trades, I would just go for like a classic bookshelf. A lot of people ask me where I get this one. This is like a, a stand back here that I do for my single issues. Uh, yes, like he's doing back there. Um, I got it on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, check retail stores because a lot of them just get rid of like their big displays. And I think it was Belk was getting rid of this like magazine stand on Facebook Marketplace for free. It took four grown men to get this up the stairs in my apartment. <laughs> you know, this that is so weighs, sick like, though. 600 pounds, dude. Like, easy. It's oh, crazy. Dude, yeah, it's like, it's like, solid wood. It's crazy. Oh, but, um, no, but yeah, I'd get a lot of shelves for your uh, trays. I would not suggest a Walmart shelf. I had all my trays on a Walmart shelf. This thing just collapsed. So, yeah, see, I suggest Target. This big old black bookshelf right here is from Walmart. $25 bookshelf. I did have some books on it at one point. Saw it bend it a little bit and it's like, eh, let's put the toys on it. So, yeah, the figures yeah. are fine for it. I have all my figures on Walmart shelves. But if you want, like, one to hold a lot of trades, get a Target shelf. They're, like, $15 more than the Walmart ones, but they're, like, super sturdy. Uh, they don't warp easy. Um, so, yeah, that's where I got all my books yeah. on now. The, that This white shelf and that white mm. shelf Target. So, yep. um, definitely, the Facebook Marketplace, like you said, Ikea, there's a lot of places. Definitely check them out. Um, but... Most people aren't going to find too much problem with storing their trades in um, hardcovers. It's definitely the single issue. So, um, yeah. and by the way, I, a lot of people ask me where I get my collection, my V or my drawer boxes from. www.collectiondrawer.com. Heck yeah. How much are those a piece? Like each drawer? I, I get them from my LCS. Um, so I think I get them for like 15, 15 ish. Yeah. That's like a normal. Yeah. yeah. 
And a lot of people are like, oh, but it doesn't have the graphic. Yeah, but I don't have to take off 10 boxes on top of it to get to this one. So, Yeah, I don't plan on getting a lot of graphic ones. I have two. One that someone just sent me with a bunch of comics in it, so I just have it. And the Invincible one's just the grails. Yeah. So and I no, use my other graphics nice for all my, uh, my event books, like Infinite Crisis. That makes Final sense. Fantasy, all that stuff, yeah. But um, also, there are even nicer boxes if you want to. Uh, like, there's plastic boxes i mean shit there's wooden ones like if you're really trying to take that storage and protection to the next level there's plenty of options but drawer boxes is my recommendation and it's the most cost effective agreed speaking but of cost effective we'll talk about how we can save money on comics because as a comic book collector there's so many to collect and you yes. only have so much money a hundred percent so i mean me personally i know there's a lot of websites there's a a lot of stuff that says um that'll give you discounted books and everything like that um even places like amazon you can check the used sections instead of yep. that i know brandon's got a lot of tips and tricks under the saving money so take it away well we can do our like you know the generic ones like you said you can do amazon amazon used um you can obviously order from lcs uh you can order you know i i do a lot of ebay shopping so um i order through this place called thrift books on ebay so y'all go check them out. Essentially, they have a bunch of used comics. Make sure you check the quality because if it says acceptable, don't buy it. If it says good or very good, buy those because they'll usually just come with some library stickers on them that you can peel right off. Um, and essentially, they usually do like a buy buy four or more, get your whole purchase twenty percent off. So I can sit here and buy thirty comics, pay one hundred and fifty bucks, and I just like added like three new series to my collection. Um. Yeah. So that's a great place to go. I've heard organic price books is really yes, good. Great show. Um, yeah. So if you're watching this, uh, sponsor us, please. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> in stock trades. In stock um, trades, cheap graphic novels. I've ordered from them. Both of them. Actually, I have. Yeah. I have ordered from in stock trades. They're really good as well because they do the same thing where you buy a certain amount of them and you get a deal. Yeah. Facts. And I tend to be more of an in person shopper when it comes to comics figures anything honestly i tend to be more of an in-store just for personal preference um and so that's definitely not gonna be most of the time not gonna be the most cost effective unless you're going to the the your like used bookstores places like second and charles or ollie's or discounted discounted uh, stores those, those and stuff like that too, yeah. yeah um those are the ones that's coming off the top of my head but yeah you can get a lot of discounted books at places like that um but also and then also of course discounted or not the best place to buy comics is your LCS, LCS just to support, support the local businesses. And I always said stuff. like, it's since I'm a big like uh trade collector, like it's hard for me to buy from my LCS because you know, I can't buy retail price every trade. It's just yeah. ridiculous. But the thing about single issues is online single issues are really not cheaper than LCS. You're paying probably an Anything extra dollar more, for the yeah. single issue and then shipping, which yep. is going to cost you way more. Go to your LCS and support them and buy the single issues because nine yes. times out of 10, you'll get them a dollar cheaper uh they'll have like a deal going they'll you know like some of them bag and board them and mm -hmm. if you don't have an lts near you check out comicbookdirect.com <laughs> there you go yeah but no in all seriousness though um their the, their literal whole premise of their website is for people that to, to be an lcs for people that don't have lcs's you can have a yep. pull box that you can have a subscription list that'll send you the book whenever it comes out all that kind of stuff so comic book direct is definitely a good show mm -hmm. something else though we're talking about comics. The title of this video might have been how to get into comics 2024 or whatever, but I'm thinking we may switch it because you kind of talked about figures. We talked about figures on the shelf. Why don't we talk a little bit also about how to get into figures? So yes. new title, but also the title was the title from the very beginning of the video, how to get into comics and figures. Yeah, that Let's was go. the whole time. We had I get some questions about that, though. <laughs> but um, basically, I mean, I don't have anything in particular I was going to try to get out there, but. Um, it's also another thing that can be very expensive, can take up a lot of space. Um, so I definitely, one thing I recommend when it comes to figures and comics is don't compare your collection to other people's. Um, yeah. Don't feel like you don't have as many, like just because you don't have as many things as someone else that you have to go out and buy a certain amount more. Because that's how you're just going to get yourself into a hole. You're going to take up space with things that you don't even really want. You're You're spending money that you shouldn't be, all that kind of stuff. So Definitely same goes as comics. Um, get the figures on uh, clearance when you can and stuff like that. Comics, but, it's so much harder with figures because you can't, there's not a used section. 
for, uh, from the figures. And yeah. usually as time goes by, the figures go up in value, whereas books yeah. go down. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it's like, it's really hard to find them. Um, I've actually kind of slowed down on the figure collecting because, you know, Marvel Legends raised their prices, McFarlane raised their prices to the point where yeah. I could buy five books with the price of one figure. Yeah, you know? totally, totally. And it's like, um, I'll buy a really good one every now and then, but, and they're making a lot of the really good ones not as accessible, McFarlane, which yeah. is probably my favorite of the two. Like, and stuff. Yeah, and it's just hard to, like that Wonder Woman I ordered from Target, they canceled it after waiting like freaking Do you still not have it? it? I don't have you it. haven't found yeah. one? Dang. No, they canceled it. I'm not going to go skyrocketed. online for it. Yeah. yeah, I got so lucky with mine. Did I tell you how I have my buddy works yeah, at GameStop? Yeah, your buddy at yeah. GameStop. Uh, so like, they got one and it was a freaking platinum but yeah no I so need it for my justice league show some people i some people might not even know what we're really talking about me and brandon in particular same as Stu and mac um and most people at least collect either marvel legends um dc mcfarlane or or import. i guess mcfarlane dc universe or import brands such as revel tech amazing yamaguchi mafex sh figure arts those kind of things um, yeah. Me and Brandon are definitely more on the Marvel Legends and um, McFarlane wave. I personally got my first import figure of all time from my girlfriend um, on my birthday, the Amazing Yamaguchi Flash. And it, it has kind of started to sway my opinions on import figures. And I think I'm going to start slowing down on the Marvel Legends and um, McFarlane and stuff like that. And so I can start getting more imports. Because for those that don't know, the imports, they're normally going to be way more articulated, way more detailed, better painting, everything like that. But pretty much five, six times the price, if not even more. Yeah. Um, if you're doing a lot of posing videos or um, like stop motion, imports are the way to go. Because they have a lot of mo like movability. Um, thing is, like you said, they're like five times more. Like where you're paying... Yeah. You know, $25 for a Spider-Man figure for Marvel Legends, you're paying yeah. 150 to 200 for a Mafex. Yeah, you know, and it gets to the point where it's like this figure looks really cool and it's really articulate. But me personally, mine just sit on the shelves. I don't do posing videos or anything like that, so I'm cool with the twenty five bucks. Totally, yeah. And I mean, so here I can let me grab one of each. Each. Boom. 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 All right. Three figures. Here's a Marvel Legend. Spider Man. Amazing Friends 3-pack. Here's a McFarlane. Flashpoint McFarlane. Best one, yeah. And, ooh, I mean, you could already see what's going on here. The difference, I mean, the the the, the detail, the the accessories, and that's it comes with a lot more than just that. Um, that being said, the scaling, for those that don't know, Marvel Legends are the some of the bigger figures out there. They're a 7-inch scale. Um, so all their figures are yeah based off of a seven inch scale where McFarlane and then ninety nine percent of imports six inch scale. So that's something. Up. Some or yeah, Marvel Legends yeah. and import six inch yeah. scale. Okay. Um, but so for those that didn't know that, um, and are looking to get into collecting, if you want all your figures to be the same scale, you do maybe want to stay away from McFarlane for that reason alone. Just if you're if you're going to be copying a lot of Marvel Legends as well, and you just want that if you just want that six inch scale. Fair warning, these are seven inch scale. Um, now, um, Marvel Legends are going to probably, when it comes to Marvel Legends versus DC, because those are like the more affordable ones, they, mm -hmm. they both have their pros and cons. Like Marvel Legends definitely going to have more articulation. Um, but I feel like the D DC is going to have more detail and more like uh, they're not going to reuse the same body mold over and over again, you know? Whereas Marvel Legends, uh, I mean, they do sometimes, <laughs> but Marvel Legends does reuse like that a body mold a lot, like for almost every. I don't know. Figure. From my perspective, I think it's fairly even as far as reusing um, body molds. But I definitely agree with you on the fact that McFarlane takes the cake when it comes to detail and uh, paint application and stuff like that. And Marvel Legends is going to take when you're comparing these two is going to take the cake on articulation. Artic yeah, Nine times out of ten. Yeah, sometimes Whereas... there's a McFarlane figure. Like, I'll say this. The worst articulated McFarlane figure is more articulated than the worst Marvel Legends articulated figure. But the, yeah, best... the worst Marvel Legends, you can't even move. Yeah, exactly. But the best articulated Marvel Legends are, like, push and import. So, yeah. in my opinion. And, like, they're both starting to improve. Like, yes, they're raising their prices, but Marvel Legends is starting to improve a little bit on their detail. And uh, McFarlane's starting to improve a little bit on their articulation. Like their, I agree. Like, the blue, yeah. the blue beetle, the flash. Like they're starting to get better yep. and better about the articulation. 
I agree with you on that. Um, so basically, um, my recommendation as far as uh figures would be concerned is to basically decide what's most important to you. Do you want to just have a shelf with a bunch of figures standing there on display looking super cool, super detailed? Maybe go for something like McFarland so that you can get a lot of them at a good price and they look mm -hmm. amazing. There's also stuff like hot toys, which are gonna I don't have anything like to do <laughs> to show you, but those, those are, are three hundred a piece. Yeah, those are very like expensive. Ones. They're kind of they're way bigger though. They're they're more like a one at six one and sixth scale. Um, but they are practically page to real life or screen to figure like it's the exact same replicate. Yeah, they come it's, with like a like a super detailed base with like yeah. lights and the detail like is unbelievable. And awful yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, Mezco as well. Mezcos are um, yes, that's also a fantastic six cent scales. Yes. But those are more like um, they do a lot of cloth goods, soft room. goods. They do a lot of soft goods. Yeah, so like their like actual that. bodies are cloth, and yeah. you can remove masks, and it comes with a butt ton of accessories. And those usually range around the one hundred dollars like range. Yeah, totally. So basically, exactly. Yeah, if you're if you're really looking for saving money, but but having a sick display of DC characters, definitely check out McFarland. If you're looking to save money have a lot of figures that are fun to pose and uh, play around with and stuff like that. Check out Marvel Legends and Hasbro in general, all their other figures, G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, that kind of stuff. But then if you want the best of both worlds and you got some bread that you're willing to spend, I mean, definitely check out some imports. Brands like, yeah, Amazing Yamaguchi, SH Figure Arts, Mafex, Mezco, um, a lot of good stuff. So. Oh, and uh, touching on the accessories, if you want a lot of accessories, Marvel Legends and McFarland both kind of suck. Sometimes you'll get a yeah. really good figure with a lot, but most of the time they don't even give you an extra head, extra pair of hands. You just get well, flash figure. You Backs. get like two things of lightning. Yeah. So no it's head. Like, yeah. No. And head. that Pretty made me think though. <laughs> speaking of accessories, I got a fire tip for y'all. Yep. Where, that's where do you mine. keep your accessories? You could get these little like jewelry separators. I kind of, to me, yeah. this is pretty much just a tackle box like for fishing. But, um, you know, you just get these separators. You could stick all your hands, the effect pieces in here. I got a bunch of these just because I get so many accessories. But these are a great way to separate your um, accessories. I get a lot of questions. I have mine. Yeah, I have a whole one just for hands. And each one's different colored hands. So I know where yeah. to access them to the different figures. And I have one just for heads. And yeah. then, you know. All and then effects, guns, everything like that. At least as far as figures are concerned, there's one more thing that just came to my mind that I definitely want to make sure I get out there. If you are an out of box collector, if you open your figures, you don't need to keep all your boxes. Obviously, no. I'm gonna obviously like I'm I'm a s I do this. And so like I'm that's why I'm I'm trying to save you guys from what I do is I open my figures and then I go put my box in the in my damn closet. And now my closet is overflowing with boxes. They're literally on the floor. They're on the shelf. They're everywhere. I get, I'm starting to get rid of them now. So basically just don't be like me. If you want to do whatever you want, but if you open your figure, you don't need to keep the box. At least you don't need to keep all of them, you know, here and there, this figure, you think it might go up in value. You might want to sell it later, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Keep that box. You don't need to keep them all. Yeah. And so I, I'm pretty I, much I telling myself this. I would be done for. Like, there's just no way yeah. I would be able to. I would. I don't even have room for all the stuff I have now. Let alone what a hundred, hundred and fifty boxes. Bro, you do not want to see my closet. <laughs> it's, no it's, I, I, I don't have. Stu does the same thing too. Yeah. I think Stu has a whole stack. Of boxes. Yeah. I don't have all my boxes. I've I've done a little. I've I've done some decluttering, but it's tough. And once you start keeping them all, you're gonna want to keep them all. So. Do your best from the get go. If you don't think it's necessary to keep the box, throw that shit away. You'll thank me later. Hundred percent. Anything else figure wise, or should we jump back into some comics? But even oh. comics wise, I don't even. I'm oh, definitely also really? in general. Leave questions in the comments. Any any questions you guys have, I'll try to reply to it in the comments or in next video. Anything on how to get into comics, how to get into figures, tips tips and tricks for any of that kind of stuff. Definitely and we try to do uh we try to do you know q and a's on our actual pod so if you ask questions we'll do a q and a segment you know read all of y'all's questions answer them however y'all want and totally um, yeah. yeah yeah if you have does it even yeah even if it's not about how to get into comics or figures if you got questions drop them down below we'll i'll either get back to you on the comment or in a video so but i mean that's i think all i can really think of off the top of my head for now at least so you got anything else you wanted to touch on or you want to jump into the poll list
No, I was thinking continuity, but we're going to be here for another hour if I say. Yeah, and we it, 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 <laughs> if you if you want if you have some questions about continuity, me and Stu did talk about that in a previous episode, so just go back a couple episodes. And it, once again, if you have any more questions that we didn't touch on, drop them down below. That being like said, that. let's That's check cool. out per usual each and every week. Y'all know the drill. New comic book day every Wednesday. This week we got a lot of hype stuff coming out. For me, top five. First book is Marvel Spectacular Spider-Man number one, Spider-Men, not man. Miles and Peter both headlining the book. I can't wait. Next up, Batman 145, that savage Bruno Redondo variant. That's amazing. And basically the only reason this isn't a little bit higher is just because the Joker year one stuff I wasn't quite feeling. So it's just I'm not as hype on the current Batman run as these next three, but I still cannot wait to get back to the Zerinoff stuff. Kick it off that top three for me. Blue Beetle number seven. Issue six was one of my favorite issues in a while. Definitely my favorite issue of this series. The series overall has been great, so I'm really looking forward to this next issue, which I believe he's going back in time. We're going to get some Ted Cord. We're going to get some uh, Booster Gold, obviously. I'm hyped. Number two, Ultimate X-Men number one. Ultimate, everything Ultimates has been great so far, so I have no reason to think this is going to be any different. Written and illustrated by Peach Momoko. I can't wait. But number one, Skybound, Void Rivals, number seven, man. I am so fucking hyped for this. I can't even. Void Rivals is my shit. Everyone read this. <laughs> and then my cover of the week, I probably oh, will not dude. be picking up because it is an incentive. So I'm going to try to find it. But if I don't, it is what it is. But we got out of Boom Studios, Ranger Academy, issue five, that Dan Mora one in 25 incentive cover. Dan Mora just don't miss, man. Stu. Is not here, but he sent me his top five. He's got Miss Marvel, Mutant Manus, number one, uh, another book by Iman Vellani, so that's exciting. He's also got Blue Beetle, number seven, Cool, 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 Batman 145, of course, Zara not about to be lit. He's also got Ultimate X-Men, number one, and number two, looks like he's copying me because he also has Void Rivals at number one. Uh, I'm telling y'all, check this one out. And then his cover of the week is this foil variant for the Spectacular Spider-Man, number one, looking clean. Spectacular Spider-Man was my number six this week, but my number five is... Every time. Uh, <laughs> it's always a Spider-Man book. I swear that you forgot about and then you're like, hey, that's my number six. <laughs> yeah, last week it was uh, Spider-Punk. But um, at my number five, I have Suicide Squad, Kill Arkham Asylum number two. This is the tie into the game. And the first issue was really cool and we're going to see more of the Arkhamverse, which I love. Um, so I'm hyped to see it. And it looks like it's going to have Deathstroke, which I, I love Deathstroke in the Arkham universe. So after that, I got number four. We have uh, Neil Before Zod number three. If you're not reading Neil before Zod, it is insane. Last issue, uh, I forget her name. Uh, his his wife basically pimp slapped him into the yeah. into the ground and was like, "I'm in charge now." So yeah. Zod is either going to go crazy or he's going to roll over. I doubt he's going to roll over. Underrated, so, underrated series. Oh yeah, number three. I have Ultimate X Men number one. Um, like uh, Nate said, Spider Man was amazing. Um, Black Panther was amazing. I am expecting a lot from this. I'm not a huge fan of like watercolor art, but I think. Pete Momoko is going to write like the story that's going to fit really well with it. So I'm hyped for it. Totally. Number two, I got Batman first night. So this is um, detailing Batman's like first appearance. It's like a retelling. So it takes place in 1939 and it's like a detective story by Dan Jurgens. Looks freaking awesome. And they're in like magazine style and every variant cover is like an old timey movie like poster. Yeah, no, those are, that, that looks crazy. And then number one, I got Batman 145. I agree with Nate. Joker arc was extremely mid. Um, but we're back into the main Chip Zdarsky, like what he wants to do. Failsafe is back. Look at this. Look at this variant with the pearls and the dude. Yeah. No, that's amazing. That's cracked. But you and know, then, I get that Bruno Redondo variant. Yeah, I'm getting it too. And then my cover of the week was actually this Batman 145 by Matteo Scalera. Dude, that is so the, clean. The roof and the snow with the signal. Dude, that's just like, that just is Batman. That's bad right bad. there. And it's an incentive, so I probably won't be able to get it, but still. Yeah, exactly. I feel the same way about the Dan Mora. Damn, I dropped my figure on the ground. Oh, no. The Revolt Tech? Well, not on the ground. He just I, I just pushed him over on my desk, so he's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> but as y'all can see, a lot of heat coming out this week. Um, And like we said earlier, if you guys got any questions regarding comics, figures, anything in general, if you want to ask how Brandon's day was, Drop it down below. But with that being said, <laughs> that being said, that's going to do it for this episode of the Hall of Nerds podcast.
Make sure you tune in next week for another episode. Hopefully all four of us will be there. Yes, sir. Nerd <laughs> out or nerd on, nerd in. Nerd somewhere. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>